call the meeting to order. Um, as a special meeting, we're going to focus solely on um, the issue. We have one agenda item tonight, and that is the schedule for the 350th. Um, Carolyn, I think in part you were wanting to bring the select board in or at least talk yeah, about I, this. I don't, I don't know if anybody else is coming. It doesn't seem like um, so I was late, but I was doing Board of Health, some Board of Health issues, but it was not uh, with the other select board members. I We did post it, but um, I guess they're not coming. So uh, there's not anything I can do about that. So I guess it's going to be our decisions tonight. So Thanks. Holly, the part of the indecision that we reached the last meeting and, and uh, you know, rightly so, it would be lack of information in terms of other compete, potentially competing events um, with the parade. And also Chris and Carolyn had worked with the fireworks display and um, perhaps the, the, the way to begin the discussion is just to ask Holly, did, have you uh, had a chance to meet with the, the group in Greenfield that was in comp potential competition and what can you tell us? Um, okay, so just to bring other people in the loop, um, our parade, which is scheduled for June 10th, um, we found out is bumping into the Franklin County Pride Parade in Greenfield the same day. Um, hang on one sec, because I did have my email somewhere, here it is. Um, I reached out to them two times and the only message I got back is, we received your email and we'll follow up as soon as we can. It said midweek next week, most likely. And that was on December 8th. So I followed up again, asking if their date was set in stone and who I could speak with, uh, because there isn't any contact names, just an email link on their web pages, and no one has replied to me. So, um, with our parade scheduled for June 10th, we don't wanna compete with a local parade um, that's in a neighboring town. Um, so I was hoping that they had some flexibility, but it looks as if historically, looking back at last year, their parade was held the same weekend last year. So it looks as if they are starting to have that as their marker. And Kelly can speak to um, the Northampton Pride I believe they run that roughly the same time every year. Correct, every the same first weekend in May. So I don't know that there's gonna be a lot of flexibility with them. And I don't know necessarily that we're competing with all the same groups, but at the same time, I think that people are gonna to want to attend a parade if there's a parade in the area. And so competing with them is a question mark. And that's what I brought to the steering committee um, when we met last time. Um, so the other issue that came up when we met as a steering committee, and I know between Carolyn and Chris, you talked about the whole issue with fireworks on Sugarloaf and the Falcon um, issue and possible fledgling uh, period of time. And so I'm not sure if you've received any updated information um, from any of the agencies you were working with? Um, well, I uh, reached out to Tom Riccardi up in Conway, the Raptor rehab person. And he says it's pretty, you know, it depends on the weather when they start to nest. So it's close. And then I, um, he suggests I call Audubon. So I called Marge, um, I have her name here somewhere, but anyway, from Audubon, she was very helpful, but she said she felt it would go through June. And um, but she suggested I call Fish and Wildlife because nobody has real clear data. And um, I said that we were going to run our fireworks either from like the South Deerfield Water District area or off of Sugarloaf, either one would be disturbing to the them. So um, 
Fish and Wildlife has not, the their specialist has not gotten back to me. Um, this was a week ago. I've left two messages with him. I don't know if he's maybe on vacation or what the deal is, but he he would be um, that we yeah, so Carolyn, don't mean to cut you off, but I have been in touch with Fish and Wildlife. And that specific pair of falcons on Mount Sugarloaf, they do not have historical data on the nesting timing. They have it for elsewhere in the state, but not that specific pair. That data is missing. That's pretty much what the Audubon lady said. So it really depends on when they start to nest. We wouldn't know that until this, this year, depending on the spring. So um, I, I get the feeling that we, or if we run our fireworks one way or the other, it's, you know, I mean, we might not get permission off of Sugarloaf, but doing fireworks on the 10th is not necessarily off the table at all. Um, so I, I think we can just keep moving ahead on this, but. I think, I think one idea that we can propose to the Department of Conservation and Recreation, and it'll inevitably get to fish and wildlife because that's the sequence of events here, um, is that we do drone tracking of the nest and both you know, at the start of nesting and then throughout and even, even post fireworks. I, I su suspect that would go a long way to gaining information that they don't have because we didn't have drones back when they restored the peregrine falcons to the to Western Massachusetts. And um, so it might, it might turn the application positive because we could get information for fish and wildlife. I did, I did offer that. They were just like, well, when I talked to Audubon, they were like, well, if the fledglings haven't left yet and we you verified that with the drone, does that mean you would cancel the fireworks? So I don't know. No, I don't think we, well, we wouldn't offer to cancel it. We just offer to see if it was disruptive. We don't know, right? Even the, even the National Fireworks Association, Trade Association doesn't have good data on bird disruptions. So we'd actually be collecting data. It could be useful to a lot of people. I know. Chris, do you know which or what part of Sugarloaf they nest on? It's on the east side and it's in the ledges. It's in the so ledges. It, it faces Sunderland. So the north, the, if we actually, uh, let's say, shot them off at, at the high school, hmm. the, the noise would be at least partially muffled. Well, my suggestion was that they do shoot them over the village versus yeah. down down the valley. And I think uh, I think that's hard to do, and um, and of course, one advantage of that site is that you get multiple viewing locations from all over the place. Well, from what I remember about fireworks displays that, that I've been to, you you, you get two. Two sets of noises. One is when they explode to set them off, and the other one is the end result of the fireworks, you know, crackling and banging and and, and whatever. Um, so I'm 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 just part of the reason for asking is if it's remote from the nesting site, and at least the first suite of initial bangs and and send them into the air. Is far enough away that never. I don't think they'd ever even hear that. So I. It may yeah, be I mean, I mean, I mean, the, the the point has been brought up by other people too. Is like, how does this compare to violent thunderstorms that happen in May and June? Yeah. Well, we don't know. We don't know. Well, yeah. the bottom line is, if we don't have permission to use sugar glove, we can't use sugar glove. That's true, and but the question is, I don't think we have an answer. Yeah. On that. So, they, haven't, they haven't turned us down. They haven't turned us down. <laughs> so, so right now, the parade work group is in this pickle. Um, we sent out our invitations. Um, we're starting to hear from people. And we need to have some direction on going forward with a date that competes with the neighboring community, having a parade that 
they've had at least for a few years on that weekend or moving it. And so that's why, you know, for the this piece of the meeting, we wanted to be together to collaborate. I know that when we originally looked at the time period um, in June, it was because it would be slightly less warm. We would avoid, avoid um, Memorial Day weekend. The kids would still be in school. Um, the frontier kids um, would graduate, I think the weekend before, but seniors, obviously, if the marching band is part of our parade, could still participate. Um, people wouldn't be off to their vacations for the summer. And so we really thoughtfully considered the date with a lot of factors. We weren't aware at the time that there was a conflict. We're now aware and we need to just make some determination how we go forward uh, because you know, the thing we would have to do immediately is get a postcard out to all the people we invited with a, a date change. Um, I see Marie's hand up. Marie, did you have a comment? Oh, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, thank you. I'm just, um, I'm a guest at this meeting. I'm not on your committee, but I've been running support for Peter. Just a couple of, of things I wanted to add. I've got a friend who organizes a lot of uh, events and, and things. And he told me that the best time to schedule something, especially something new, is towards the end of June, because um, there's a lot of stuff that happens um, after that, but there's there's like a couple of dead weekends in there. So if you had to move it because you didn't want to compete with the with the Pride Parade, moving it to the 17th or the 24th would be probably be good because even though the school would be closed, you could probably arrange to still have the band march because people haven't necessarily dispersed yet before the 4th of July because the 4th of July is on a Tuesday this week, this year. So that might not be a bad thing to do. But also I wanted to say, in case some of you didn't notice, I've tried to plant a seed on Deerfield now to encourage the frontier classes to try to um, maybe coordinate their reunions this year with an event. And some of them said, oh, we could march in the parade. And so, but that's something that I was hoping that, that the different classes would get going and not something a task that, the, that the, uh, this committee would have to take on. But if you had a date, then they could get going on that. And it seemed like there was some enthusiasm for having multiple year um, um, reunions at that time. So that's just something I wanted to throw out there. But having a date and having it soon, I think is critical. So you can start getting people working on, on concurrent projects. So that's just my two cents worth. Go ahead, Denise. Can I ask what I think is probably going to be a really unpopular question? Can we just see if the uh, 14 of us actually do feel that this would be competition with the Pride Parade? I personally don't think it is. I, I, I think I an event is always going to have competition. I think these are two real different groups of folks who are going to want to go to parades. So maybe we should see what 14 people right now think. I have to tell you, I agree with that, Denise, because I, I feel it's important to do it at the end of the school year, whether we move it to the 17th or 24th, I don't really care. Maybe we wouldn't have as many conflicts with the birds if we move it another week or two, but I'm, I feel very strongly that it's the end of the school year. People are ready for parties. People are ready for cookouts. They want to do, you know, stuff, family stuff, and family celebration. Whereas if we move it, the other, you know, we were talking about September and I, I you know, number one, the schedules aren't made for, so we don't know what the sports schedules are in the fall. People come back from the summer and they're grinding, you know, you, you grind ahead for the fall, you settle in, kids are into, you know, sports schedules and all kinds of stuff. And I, I think there's going to be more competition, less desire to have backyard cookouts, do kind of, you know, flow events, you know, party events between the parade and the fireworks. Um, I, I feel like if we're going to do something, we need to do it in June. Am I, 
locked into June 10th, I'm not. If people want to change it because of the birds, because of the pride parade, that's fine. But I do believe we should try to do June. I, I feel pretty strongly about that, Denise, as well. Oh. And I and I don't feel like we're in really in competition with, um, you know, what's happening in Greenfield, really. Let's make different. one more comment. Yeah. I, it, at our parade, um, the last parade meeting that I attended, we did suggest, and it's a possibility, that we continue to have it on the 10th. I think Holly said we already have some responses from folks who said they'd like to be in the parade. And it would be very hard for people who are, you know, we, we want to make it simple for folks. We did say there's another possibility if the pride parade is from, I, and I, I understand why we, I understand the pros and cons of this. If the pride parade is from 12, <laughs> to two, we may not go from two to four. Just change the hours. And then folks might be able to do both. I don't know, but at least we could say we were trying to accommodate everybody. Okay, Denise, could you, Denise, could you repeat the times you were saying because um, oh, I just threw those out. I just threw it out, Holly. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, why don't we just change the times? I think when we talked before, we said the I pride trade was from twelve to two. We weren't sure, and then we said, well, why don't we do two to four? I know it goes later in the evening. I mean, in the afternoon, but that also allows people to stay when the parade is over, take advantage of all the good food that's going to be there and maybe move into the fireworks in the evening stuff and the music without a little gap. I hate to change the date when it's already out there, but I also honestly feel that there are folks who, when they find out that we considered the birds, which I really didn't know about, and then we went and did it anyway, we're gonna get stuff from people who feel like that's really important. And I kind of do. So that's it. I'm gonna turn off my... Anybody else has some, some comments of the pros and cons? I think if we if, if we all have an opportunity to at least express sort of where we are, um, I don't mind taking a poll. Um, but um, Holly, what time frame were we talking about for the parade as, as you had initially envisioned it? Uh, the parade is scheduled for two o'clock. Two o'clock. And so it would run a couple of hours, you think? Um, we're just safely saying two to four. Okay. Um, Diane, do you have any thoughts on this? So I said a lot last time we had a meeting. <laughs> we'll I, say it again. I, I was for the ch the time could be a bit of a variable. Uh, I personally did think it might be. Um, we still have a lot of people at both parades, and um, I I. I like the original date. Well, as I said, I said all that last meeting. Well, Kelly, I'll take I a remember, like, Kelly, have you said, I mean, what do you feel like or Rocky or Cindy? What, I mean, we haven't heard from everybody. Um, I feel that if we're going to plan an after event, we are running out of time. We also don't know about the birds and what we're going to do with that. We're running out of time. We can't push this stuff off to just guess later and then be like oh well no it's not going to work um oh well and then we have this huge parade that we have to plan personally i think we should push it out so you think we should go for the 17th or the 24th uh i was actually thinking september oh really? yeah and if it's september it's september 16th because the north northfield 350th oh, is doing it i think it's the 24th and my thought process was, is if we do a parade one weekend, they do it the following weekend, similar people participate, they'll have their float together, they'll be more comfortable because they can go from one parade to another. We're not competing. Their, their parade is on the 30th. 30th, okay. So we'd have like the two weekends before, I think. And I also think, Chris, you mentioned September would be better for the birds. No, it's not an issue at all. Not an issue. The schools are in session, bands can participate. Yes, we're dealing with sports, and, but Kelly, like somebody could, said. Kelly, could you speak to the type of organizations that are involved in the Northampton parade um, for the Pride Parade? Because I know you have been involved mm -hmm. with work. It's, it's everyone. So it's schools, um, organizations like Cooley Dickinson participated, um, Boys and Girls Club. Uh, the only one that I don't think we would have to compete with is you know, like police and fire, I don't think they participate, but I think 
there would be some conflict with who participated. Oh, we may yeah. not, we might have different people that would like go to see the parade, you know, 350th versus pride. pride, but I do think we'd have some conflict with who signed up to be in the parade. They'd have to choose. If somebody has background noise, could you mute your, your, your screen if you're not on? I it's think it's Stan. Stan. I think Stan, Stan walked down the hallway. Right. Can um Chris, can you uh Chris, can you mute Stan? Yes, let me oh, yeah. see about that. Thank you, Chris. I don't know I did my father's job. There. Okay. Thank you. That's a lot better. <laughs> um uh, okay, so so the friends of Deerfield have been talking about this and talking to other people in the town. Um, you know, it, when we got the 10th June out there, people started kind of getting excited about that, to be mm -hmm. honest. And the feedback I've received is people really expect it to go off on the 10th. Okay. I mean, that doesn't mean we can't do it September 16th. I mean, because that was probably the only alternative date, you know, because of um, uh, county fairs. And and on the 24th is the craft fair up in Old Deerfield. So, um, I, mean, I mean, I'm still, I think Carol and I would both say the jury's still out as to whether we'll get approval from Mount Sugarloaf, but um, we're working hard at it. And we're trying to be creative in giving them proposals to gather data on these birds and their and their their habits, right? That they don't have. Um, and so, I know I just so, here, so here's. I just so, want to interrupt one second and just say we haven't even gone to Joe, like Joe Cumberford, to apply pressure to do this. This is we're still doing background because they haven't said no. I mean, that's the critical part. They haven't said no. So it's, we're trying to work with them so that they can say yes. But if they do say no, we're going to start pressuring just like for the cake, because the cake, you know, was no. And we were like, oh, wait a second, we're going to do it. So we put a lot of pressure on and we got permission to end up, you know, they gave us the, the right to put the cake out. So, I mean, Chris and I feel pretty strongly that we're trying to work this in a positive way, but at the same time, we haven't applied any pressure yet to make them say yes. So I- And, 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 and remember on the fireworks that we talked about in the last meeting, that the rain date, the preferred rain date would be Friday the 9th, and the second rain date would be Sunday the 11th realize that there's state laws in Massachusetts to not allow even the setup of fireworks, never mind firing them if there's rain. So we need, you know, you need two days or maybe yeah. one very extended day for setup and firing without rain. Chris, just quickly, is it, if we don't do them off the, the mountain, do you think that there's an issue with the Falcons if we used uh, the high school area? No, anything in the town of South Deerfield on that side of the mountain will not be an issue. Right. I, so I can't we have, imagine we, it being an issue. So that basically is a fallback. And we have not the, scouted out those alternative sites. I did not right. bring the fire um, works company down from Vermont. It's in Montpelier. So it's a pretty long track. We were waiting on this meeting. Okay. If we have to scout out alternative sites, then we bring them down. They meet with the chief of police, the chief of fire, and do the same thing that they've already done on Mount Sugarloaf. They've already gone to the top of that venue. Marky? Um, so, but, but here's another thing that I heard at the last meeting. About the 10th, there was concern about having the resources for the, if you will, after parade events. The, I'll call it the festival side. Well, Friends of Deerfield have been talking about this and also based on feedback that we've got and people requesting different types of events. One of the things that people have asked us to do and organize is a chicken barbecue. 
And obviously, if we organize that, we do it with live bands and things like that, right? I mean, we do we do the whole thing. So one thought is, don't worry about after events of the parade. Let people go back, especially if we can get it off of Mount Sugarloaf, let them go back to their backyard barbecues and, and parties and stuff like that. Their get-togethers, right? So we kind of avoid this whole crowd control, all the resources necessary to organize that. Um, uh, and, you know, all, all the, there's costs associated with it too. And then consider, and this is, this is the first time we've mentioned this and there's been no discussion yet with other venues. Consider doing the chicken barbecue as kind of the weekend finale on the afternoon evening of the 11th. Because mm -hmm. typically in this town, in these towns, I mean, when I grew up, all the chicken barbecues were on Sundays. They typically were. I, I, I mean, I don't know how many are done anymore or whatever, but it's doable to pull that type of thing off. Um, and if we get it underneath the tent, uh, then we don't have to worry about weather either on the 11th. And then that, that addresses that issue that everybody brought up last time about we don't even have probably the resources to organize the after events. Well, the after event could be go up to Greenfield, go up to the festival that's after the parade party, ride park parade. They have festival in the fairgrounds. So if somebody wants to do something Saturday afternoon, evening, they can go up there. And then we have our finale back in Deerfield on the afternoon of Sunday. And hopefully we fire the fireworks off on Saturday night. Yeah, Holly. Um, Cindy had her hand up before, and Rocky had his hand up. Um, I. Cindy, go. Okay, thank you. I I would just wanted to express a, a at least um, similar to Carolyn that I think June is a great time to have the parade. Um, for one thing, because the days are so long already, the days are getting a little longer now than they were in December. And it just seems so much nicer. And when you get into September, the days are kind of painfully short. And I, I do think people have a lot of energy in June and a lot of, you know, a lot of excitement about um, getting together. So, I agree. Uh, and I, I grew up in Hatfield uh, um, two years ago when we had the parade. I think that, I think it was, I think it was on the 4th of July because that had to do with some, some um, funds they were getting for that. But the two before that, cause I was there 50 years ago and 25 years ago, and it was in June and it was, it was really beautiful. So I, so, but I, I do think it's a hard decision about whether it would be uh, the 10th or um, the 17th. I, I thought there was also a concern that um, it was um, alumni weekend in, at Deerfield Academy. And so there was going to be a lot of resources over there too it, on, on June 10th. I, I think that was a concern on the 10th, but um uh, it's unfortunate that we have the conflict. The other thing is, I wonder about with the following weekend, now we have the new holiday, June, um, Juneteenth. Is that going to be, is there going to be something with respect to that that starts up? I don't, I don't think so, but, um, but that is almost like a holiday weekend, the following weekend. I was just told tonight uh, by uh, John Davis that they are going to do a Juneteenth event as, at Historic Deerfield. What what day is Juneteenth this coming year? The nineteenth. I think it's on a Monday. It's okay. a Monday, the nineteenth. So um gosh, maybe maybe we should maybe we should move the parade to that next week. It'll be a long weekend. Yeah. Now I mean the other thing to think about is if it's a long weekend, do people leave? Um but are they more ready to party that weekend? I don't, you know, I, what do you think? Well, Rocky, you had, you wanted to speak, go ahead. You're muted, Rocky. You're still muted. <laughs> there we go. There you go. I was thinking if we do have the fireworks at the high school, are we going to have any problems with the railroad? 
you know, they, want, I mean, they, they typically want 400 feet from the railroad too. So we're going to have to deal with that aspect in, in the center of South Deerfield. They want 400 feet, 360 to 400 feet all the way around. If you're 400 feet from the railroad, where, I mean, I'm trying to envision where that is. Where would that be? I mean, it takes up a lot of that high school landscape, probably. Yeah, probably be more towards the uh, ball field. Yep. Again, we haven't marked it off, all of you. We haven't, we haven't looked at that option. But in terms of trains passing, I mean, you know as well as I, the, the, the schedule of the train since you're right on the tracks, but the, the, it doesn't seem to be more than two trains a day. So an active train going by probably is unlikely. I mean, yeah, we, we'd have to coordinate that with the federal government. Yeah. Just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> and the fireworks, just so people know, the timing of them it would be a 20 minute show and it would probably kick off between 9.15 and 9.30 in the evening uh, based on daylight hours and the best viewing possibility of that time of year. Any other uh... Comments, Marv, you want to make any any comments? No, okay. I guess I guess the other thing that you know, bringing up from a friends of Deerfield standpoint, um, if we were to try to do this chicken barbecue as kind of the finale to the weekend, uh, okay. I haven't had these discussions. Um, we have voted as a board that I can approach it, depending on what the timing ends up being, but it is possible we could work with Deerfield Academy to access access the great tent on Sunday afternoon and evening that they had been using the prior three days for their reunion. So, but I have not had any discussion with Deerfield Academy, just with our board saying that depending on how this meeting went, I could reach out to the leadership of Deerfield to see if that's a possibility. I don't know if they would keep it up for another week if we went to the 17th or 24th of June. So you, yeah. Go ahead, Cindy. I was just gonna say, if if it were moved a week and, and you decided to go with chicken barbecue on Sunday, it would be sort of feel like a Saturday if people had, a lot of people have Monday off being a long weekend. Yeah. Also yep. Father's Day that Sunday, so I don't know if that's going to be an issue. Sunderland did have their event on Father's Day weekend. Um, they had a Saturday, Sunday um, parade Saturday, music and food and fireworks at night, and then polka bands on Sunday. So they did have multiple events, and it was Father's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. Was there anything, uh, uh, for some reason, we we picked the 10th over the 17th already. So what was, the, do you remember what the reasoning was, Holly? Um, two things I think came into play is Frontier would graduate the weekend before. So if the seniors were still going to be around and maybe participate with the band, it would just be a few days later after the graduation. Um, two elementary school, I think is out close to Father's Day weekend. I don't know what this year's calendar is. Um, do you have a calendar, Kelly, for this year? It depends on snow days, but typically they're out uh, that week prior. It's like a half day on that Friday. Yeah. So, so, so chances are the elementary school is also done. Uh, so I know we considered the school calendars um, for both the high school and the elementary. Um, Sunderland's being Father's Day weekend, and it's it's really, who knows? It's a flip of the coin what the weather's going to be. Um, I want it to be nice, but not hot, you know, not rainy, but you just never know. Sunderland's was horribly hot. Yeah, it was. And so I know we talked about that, and that's why we thought a week early 
um, might avoid a little bit of that encroaching summer heat. Um, so um, what I'd like to add to the mix, and, and Chris, thank you for sharing the potential options um, that Friends of Deerfield might offer, not holding you to anything, but um, the parade work group that has really been primarily focused on the parade, but of course, of course wanting it to be a celebratory day and or weekend for our town have been you know, looking into a full day of events with potential food trucks and or use of our uh, food options in town. Uh, we've considered closing Elm Street, which wasn't really that much in favor by the police department. Um, we've looked at the use of Frontier Regional, but you can't have liquor on school grounds and you can apply for a waiver for one day, but that's an issue. But frankly, within the body of the parade work group, I feel right now we've got enough on our plates. Um, Sue Antonellis was brought into the mix to help with post parade uh, things, but Sue has notified um, Kelly and I that she has some health issues and cannot continue to offer her help. And so we've got a dilemma of a band she was booking and we need to get back to them on whether or not we wanna sign their contract or not. So there's just this whole hornet's nest sitting um, on our laps in the parade work group. And, you know, I, Kelly and I have talked offline uh, just about our leadership with the parade work group and feel we need to devote our time to the parade tasks. Holly, I don't think there's any issue. Uh, we just didn't realize that there might be, you know, personnel issues. So, but whoever is doing the, um, you know, it, the select board is directing whoever is doing the recreational job at this point to be doing rather than an old old home day kind of activity to do support for the transition group. So there will be somebody doing that. I don't know who it is at that point because I'm it's an L issue. So okay. I can't really talk about it in a public meeting. But no, no, I'm just simply saying this came up, you know, when there was the uh, so I wouldn't worry about it. what I'm saying is that the select board doesn't want you as the parade group to have to worry about the transition events. The transition events will be handled by the recreation department. We just don't know who is going to be in the recreation department position at that point. Okay. Okay. So I'm um, getting back to the band that sent a contract out. Someone will be doing that. I, we, this is new information that I got from you. And okay. I'll, I'll send that we, along to you. Yes. We so will have a meeting. Someone... Have a meeting. Uh, that was why we posted the meeting tonight. Right. So that we could have make some decisions. So We'll make so a decision one, on Wednesday on what's going on with that, okay? So, say so that again, I, Car hold up, Chris. Yeah, Carolyn, could you say that again, Carolyn? We, ha we have to have a public meeting okay, to talk about stuff. You know, okay. so that's why this meeting was posted, but obviously without Tim and Trevor here, we can't talk about it. So I will talk about it at our Wednesday meeting and we will discuss how we will assign the work for your transition activities. Okay. 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 Thank you. So one other idea too that we had in terms of you know post parade activities, and this may not just be limited to that weekend, whenever the parade is, is you know, we've talked about this before of partially um utilizing some of the parking spaces along, I think it's called Elm Street, that like where Johnny Figs is and Holiday and stuff like that. I, I don't remember what the names of the streets are, but and and having some outdoor seating with you know the tents, you know, that go over the top. They're they're small. They're not complicated. Um, but this is what a lot of cities do now: is that in the summer they move and create more space outside for the restaurants and for socializing and that we could 
maybe have the month of June from like, you know, early June through July 4th, where we have that special permits for those businesses, those restaurants to have outdoor. And that would create another, if you will, after parade venue, but it could, it could go more than one weekend. It could go three or four weekends. Mm. And uh, because we have models of that all over North America and in Massachusetts also of where they set up these, 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 um, these outdoor seating and, and tent areas so that, you know, you're out of the sun and out of the rain if it comes down and it creates more space for people to go out. Now those establishments have to, you know, secure their, the necessary staff to handle that, that bigger demand, but that, that could be a nice other thing that could be post parade, if you will. And again, it takes the burden away from the town to organize all these events or away from friends of Deerfield and gives an opportunity to businesses to pull it off. So, I mean, I, there has to be a balance here of, of who's doing what. That's that's all I'm suggesting. Yeah. And, and that was our intent, Chris, when we were looking at doing something is to try to engage the businesses in town and give them opportunity to showcase what they have, um, you know, with other visitors coming in and, you know, past town residents, et cetera. So um, that, that's actually a really good idea. Well, maybe I'm jumping the gun, but from what I'm hearing is that there's less inclination to put it off till the fall. Are we down to the 10th or the 16th, or do we want to vote on well, the 17th? Include the fall in, in, in there as well. Um, I, I mean, there, there, there's definitely variability in terms of what might be done. Um, but I think we've got a number of options and we've also got some, uh, Chris has given us a number of opportunities that we didn't have before in terms of filling in gaps and, and, and whatever. Um, so well, why don't we vote June or the fall? Okay. And then we vote the day in June. So how many people are supportive of a fall parade versus a June parade? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <Do we exist? laughs> okay. Hmm. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So it seems like I know panicking Kelly and Holly, but it seems like June is a popular month. Okay. So let's talk about what what days in June. All right. June 10th, bird potential bird problems, but the postcards on the other side, the postcards are already sent out. We've already gotten people committed or even interested in responding. So, and then we got the 17th, which is a holiday weekend, pros and cons on that. And then we got the 24th. I'm kind of leery about going to the 24th, but I'm on the fence on the 17th. I mean, it's really up to, I mean, I, I would be fine either way. That's just my personal opinion. I think we should go around and see what people want to say about moving it. Denise, you look like you want to say something. Go ahead. I do. Holly, how, do, do we have people committed to the 10th? Um, we have not replied to anybody yet because of this meeting. So we have, last time I checked, um, and Kelly, I don't, can you bring up the email account to see if there's any additional, I think there were five responses. No, that's what I don't remember saying. the password for that email account. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we think there were five folks who committed to have floats or to be in the parade. Right? Um, I, I think there's a combination. Okay, so, and then we sent out contracts to the Shriners and they said, 
they'll hold that date? We we have not done a contract yet. They said the date was available and we don't have a contract yet. Okay. We're still in negotiations with them. Okay. Well, you five isn't too many. Five isn't too many. Um, you know, I just, I, I don't know. I hate to change dates once you kind of have it in your mind that it's going to be a certain time, but we've made a really good case for the 17th. It's a long weekend. That might be really a good thing. Could be a so good party. Maybe I'm leaning towards the 17th, but boy, then we have to go to the expense and everything of letting everybody else know that it's changed because that's the correct thing to do. Yeah, I. Holly, when you're talking to the Shriners, did you, was it for the tent specifically, or did they indicate that they were kind of open? No, I, I was wondering not. if we go to 17th and you get back and they said, "Sorry, that's filled." I, um, I can't answer wasn't... that question because I only asked them about the date we had agreed okay, to. That, that's what I was curious about. Yeah. yeah. Question. Cynthia. Yeah, I just have a question on this. Um, does does the frontier band go to the pride parade like will because that's that's our important um we want to make sure frontiers at the parade but frontier didn't even participate in the waitley parade yeah okay and that so. was at the end of june mm -hmm. they didn't participate mm -hmm. i have to wonder if we got out our stuff before the pride group i don't know um um, probably did because their site right now says information coming about the parade. It doesn't have even the date. It only has last year's stuff. Um, information on next year's pride coming soon. That's what it says. Oh, we're not Wait. sure. <laughs> what is that? I just wanted to jump and say, so we're not sure they're going to have it on the 10th. Um, well, they had it on the 11th last year, so um, I'm presuming because they've got other venues that also are interrelated, Hawks and Reed and the fairgrounds. I would almost think they would have to have it secured by now. I just have not not had a good response. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm I'm conflicted on the dates. Um, twofold. One, selfishly, we've already sent out invites for the date involved. Um, and we could just keep going forward because we've already got the wheels in motion uh, with permitting and the invites um, and the Shriners and yada, yada. But there's a, a good argument for the 17th because we will not bump into the parade um, um, in Greenfield if they do have it as we expect on that day. And second of all, we wouldn't compete with uh, the alumni events at Deerfield Academy if we pushed one week. So I think that there's merits both ways. Um, I think Kelly and I are here to get some clarity so our parade work group can move forward and tackle the tasks we need to do. I just want to throw out there um, that my husband, who has been a resident, you know, for a long time, was actually bummed because he had he works at Deerfield Academy and would not be able to attend the parade. Um, and so, you know, his feelings were, why can't they move it? Because he wanted to go. So just keeping out that that there's going to be people that can't attend because they're, they're working at the two schools, because I think it's both of them. It's Eagle Brook, too. It's also or, or one of them having. OK, that's too. Well, I mean, that to me is more valid uh, to move to the 17th than the conflict with the Pride Parade, because um, you're competing with activities that are already going on. And, and people, you know, have conflicting, you know, commitments. So, I mean, like Chris, Chris is coming up for reunion. So yes, it's better for him to have the parade on, you know, cause it's an airplane flight up, but he, you know, is committed to the, some of the events at Deerfield that weekend too. So, I mean, I almost feel like moving that 
we've only just started you guys i know you send out the postcards we put all this but it's just january now it's the first freaking week of january so changing it from the 10th to the 17th gives us a little bit more wiggle room for the birds but also i think it takes the conflict away from da uh it it's still early enough and away from the 4th of July that people haven't left town. And I, you know, I think if we ask, specifically ask Frontier Band to participate, even though school is out, the kids, and there might be a lot of snow days, who knows, but we could get the Frontier kids to come back, voluntarily come back. You know, it might not be 100%, but it was never going to be 100% because some of the seniors are graduating and moved on uh, to jobs or whatever. So we'll get the majority of the band back if we ask and we ask them to participate and they, we get a commitment from them. Rocky? My uh, grandson lives out in uh, Oklahoma, Edmond, Oklahoma, and he was in the band and they came together for July 4th in March. Okay, and, and school, their school gets out in, in the middle of May, right? So they had like a whole month and they still came back in March in the parade. Yeah, I mean, it's a special occasion. So I think we'll have that um, emotional aspect to sell to them. And there's other creative things we can do to support the band to get them to come back. But I'm not going to bring that up here. But um, and uh, you know the thing that I would have to do probably tomorrow is I would contact Deerfield Academy about that tent and see if we can keep it up one more week because mm -hmm. we need that for that Sunday. And I don't think it's an issue of I don't think it's an issue of uh, the grass because the grass gets trashed no matter what. It's it's not that, and we're just going to have to look at costs and stuff like that. So I don't know if they own that tent or they rent it. I don't know. I don't know how that's done, to be honest, up there. Chris, is that going to be a big deal for you if it's two weekends in a row? No, I mean, it, it, I mean, if I have to, I just go back and forth. I mean, if if I have other stuff in the middle oh, of the week, sorry. it's not an issue at all. That's not an issue. Look, I. I could tell you what I've done over the last 30 years with air traffic. So, but, but otherwise I'd stay for the whole week. Mm -hmm. And then it allows us to get stuff done, you know, because there's a lot of prep that comes for any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw that even with the Jubilee, I didn't, I wasn't on the ground until midday on Friday, but you know, there was a lot of stuff going on from Wednesday through Sunday for that. So no, I, I don't think that's I don't we don't plan around Chris Harris's schedule. And you know, to be perfectly honest, in terms of Deerfield Academy reunions, I've showed up every five years my entire life. This will be my 40th, even when I lived in Europe, but I usually only went to Saturday night because I was with family the other days. Now so Saturday and Saturday is the most important day for me I, I don't need to go to everything at Deerfield Academy to be honest well see now you could go to Saturday to Deerfield Academy and then go the following Saturday to our parade absolutely absolutely um well and and dear and just oh just so you understand Deerfield has been very clear with me because I approached them on an integrated approach for this weekend and they said that they would publicize what's happening in Deerfield for the 350th, but that they would not change their schedule at all to marry it together with ours, but that they would let everyone know this is what's going on. So it's not like we had anything integrated between the Academy reunion weekend and our 350th parade um, festival fireworks day. Um, no, it wasn't integrated at all. All right, well, then I'm gonna throw it out that we wanna potentially look at this as the 17th instead of the 10th. I think there's a lot more pros to the 17th than the 10th. And, but it, we aren't moving to the fall. So I, I feel strongly that that's probably a good decision. 
So how do people feel? Are, are we going to support the move? How many people are supporting a move to the 17th? Okay. It, it looks like the majority, there's consensus for the 17th. I know it's a pain in the butt. Well, Holly and Kelly, I'm so sorry because you guys were on top of sending out postcards, but let's blame it on the birds. What the yeah. heck? And, and, and I, this will give me more opportunity. I'll call back Audubon. I'll call back Tom Riccardi. I'll call back Andrew Vitz. And I will say, look, we had a meeting and, and we talked about the birds and we're moving it to the 17th and, you know, whatever. So we'll start that process tomorrow. I'll start that process tomorrow. And hopefully we'll move forward more with the fireworks. Now, Chris, do you think there's going to be any problem moving the weekend from the 10th to the 17th? No, I mean, we're, we're way ahead of the game compared to most people in terms of scheduling fireworks. They get, they get the July 4th is their big weekend. So right. as long as, I mean, they get calls from people that less than a month in advance. We started six, seven months. Oh, so okay. they told me that if we move it in June or move it to September, it's not an issue. We've been in touch with them for a while now. Okay. Uh, that would be the big thing. Okay. I call, I'll call them tomorrow. I promise to follow up after this meeting. Right. They, they I, knew that we would wait till after January 9th. Okay. To have our next discussion. And I will start, I will call DCR. I'll call everybody tomorrow. I'll make, you know, the all, all the stuff I've been working on. Like I said, they haven't said no. So this, you know, we're, we're being sensitive to the birds. So this is a good thing. So I feel like it gives me a little bit more um, to talk about and I'll just Absolutely. keep working. Yeah, I'll just keep working the phones and, you know, whatever. Chris, can and you we'll, also follow up with the board in terms of your uh, suggestion for the chicken barbecue? I think that's a, we, that could be a good selling point too. Right. Yeah, I mean, we, we voted already as a board to, um, to seriously consider and start initial planning to do that type of event because we've heard from townspeople that they want it. Okay. And we were thinking that if we put it together with this parade fireworks weekend, we could take some load off the entertainment requirement for post parade and give people the opportunity to go have family barbecues, parties, that type of stuff and watch the fireworks from their backyard. So we thought there was a lot of benefits to doing, to bring this event up on that weekend. And now if you say it's a holiday weekend, we should get pretty good attendance on Sunday afternoon and evening. Yeah, I, I agree. And kids will definitely either be out of school or like, like this past year, because the snow, I mean, they had a half a day on a Monday. I mean, really. Well, it, it also right. gives us, it gives us better rain day possibilities, even if we had to spill over the Monday holiday. Right. If, if we really had a stretch of bad weather, we could still pull it off between Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Yeah. From that weekend. Yeah, that's, I hadn't even thought about that. So do, does everyone feel comfortable? Holly, Kelly, are you all set with, if we do move it to the 17th? I know it's a pain and I apologize, but how do you feel? I'm okay with it. I mean, it, it gives us an extra week, I guess. I, I would like to think that, that we're far enough out that I won't, those people that have signed up, it's not gonna be a big issue to move it. That, I feel the same way. Um, I think the, you know, the one conflict in town with the DA and Eagle Brook um, alumni, I think to get away from those, we might get some support with um, things we were looking for, like golf carts or maybe mm -hmm. some buses. Um, I don't know. I don't know what happened to my my screen. Hang on. You're still you coming see. across verbally, Holly. I yeah. I don't know what happened. It's so weird. Um, 
So, you know, as much as it's going to be a bit of a nudge, um, because we ended up having printing done up at the Franklin County House of Corrections, and they were very good and timely, um, maybe they could help us with a postcard that we could get out ASAP with the date change. Um, and, and, you know, some web links. So um, I'm going to just play around with my computer, Kelly, if you have anything else to add. We can see you. We can see you fine. fine. I know. I can't see anybody else, though. I can't see anything. Huh. Oh, there you all are. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what happened. Um, so... Selfishly, I also had to work the ninth in the evening, so I went to I wouldn't have been available to help out. <laughs> so now I am. <laughs> this so I just, this is I just news I'm just hearing now. <laughs> I just did confirm that Eagle Brooks reunion is the same as Deerfield Academy. It's the ninth through the eleventh. Okay. I did not know that. I just confirmed it online. Okay. So Probably that's we, heard then. That's a public we, we were going to do the parade at two o'clock. So two to four time block would then work into food trucks and music and other things post parade before fireworks. But if we're going to unplug post parade um, worries or coordination um, because people may be wandering home before fireworks um, would would we want to consider the parade earlier than a two o'clock start? I like that time. Okay, two o'clock's good. Yeah, it, you're, people, you're over the noon heat too, so that's. Well, and people also, it's a Saturday, they still have their time to do whatever, whether oh, it's I think, uh, that, I think that's good. a little league game or whatever, you know, people have their morning to do oh, their sure. stuff. I think most sports games are in the morning, right? Usually, for the most part, yeah. I mean, if they have last-minute touches for their float, things like that, you know, they they have that time to do it. Yeah. Okay. So two o'clock is still good. Yep. Okay. But, and 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 you know, in terms of this idea of doing things with downtown restaurants and outside, et cetera. I mean, we just have to get that off the ground and see if there's a possibility, but that's really doesn't affect. It's more, it's, it would be more of just something that these businesses, if they wanted to do it, could do it. And then it's special permitting by the select board and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I know in Northampton, they closed strong street and they had summer on strong the last two summers where uh, restaurants had tables and you know people could eat out you know it doesn't have to be closing the street but allowing seating outside you know evenings on elm i mean we we could just have some fun with trying to promote our local businesses yep yeah. you're muted diane you're muted um, once again, I'm asking, how's that Leary lot project going? Oh, we're trying to move it. <laughs> really want to. I'm going to ask you every time. Good. Keep That's, going. I bring it up every yeah. selectors meeting. If I can be appointed. Are the lawyers yeah. exchanging let's, the property get, yet? <laughs> yep. Well, let's get this going. We want the Leary lot done also. I know. You know be it have <laughs> overflow crowd or or porta potties or, or tents or something, we uh, definitely need that, that, that piece of property also. Diane, the money is there. We just are trying to exchange the property at this point, but honestly, we are pushing it. I bring it up every meeting. Ask Rocky, he hears it. <laughs> That's okay, all. do we have a general consensus? We're going to we'll go for the 17th yes. parade, two to four. Fireworks in the evening. Is that right, Chris? Yeah, that would be the idea. Okay. Yep. We'll start working on this bird business and uh, the permit for DCR on Sugarloaf. 
and Chris, Chris and I are, are, you know, we talk. So if we either one of us get any information, we'll communicate to each other. Um, and we'll have the information for our meeting on the 30th this month. Okay, hopefully. Don't forget to get our legislators, uh, give them a little push. Yeah, well, the thing is, I gotta have DCR come out and say no before you start going to the legislature to beat, beat up DCR. So the new governor's on board, there'll be a new head. There's, I mean, there's a new head of EEOA. So um, we'll see what's going on, okay? I mean, the extra week is gonna be a big help because yeah, some, of those, I, some of those birds leave the nest before the middle of June, in fact. So that extra week makes the difference. I, I it will make a difference, I think, too. So we're, we'll, I'm going to spin this meeting as we were sensitive to the birds. We put it off for a week, and so I'll just make new phone calls, and we'll hopefully get more positive feedback from DCR. And hopefully, Holly, you're feeling comfortable with what's the change. We don't want you to have that much stress about what's going on either, you know, because you're doing most of the planning with well, Kelly. Well, I mean, we've, we've got some follow-ups to do, um, you know, with a number of entities. Kevin Scarborough is helping with the permitting for the DOT lot, the highway traffic shift. Um, so those are going to have to be amended. Um, I don't know where those are at, but they'll have to be amended. We've got the water department to notify, but they were very agreeable. So um, I think that should be okay. Yeah. We've got to follow up with the Shriners and obviously notify all the people we invited. But um, I think we're early enough that we can do this manageably, but we're going to have to do it in the next few weeks. Yeah, I know as just as a, and an aside, I was talking with the deputy police chief or whatever. He said he's got com people's commit vacations committed to the tent. So that'll be something that they need to reorganize as well. But I, I think there'll be, uh, there, it's early enough that hopefully people will be able to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if this would be awful if we were in April or May. But I, I don't, you know, this is like I said, the first week in January. Um, as long as people don't have a commitment for the 17th, I think we should be able to swing with minimal impact. The only thing I feel bad about is that, you know, we, you know, it's a lot of extra work for both Holly and Kelly. So I'm in the parade committee. So I'm really sorry about that. Well, it might, it might impact. Um, you know, Chief Pachurik, because he may have already approved some vacations knowing it was on the 10th and told people they couldn't have vacation on the 10th. So, I mean, I don't know how the trickle down is going to affect other people, but I guess we do the best yeah. we can. I think it's still, I think, though, Carolyn's right, it's still far enough out so that if we'd done this in April, to the police force, that'd be one thing. I mean, it's still January, there's five months to go. So it, yeah. they can rearrange it. And I don't think it, it'll be that much of it. I, I know for a fact that I had brought it up to the EMS, but we have a, um, e my EMS meeting is coming up. So I will just change that on the EMS cal calendar. And, and that, the schedule for June hasn't been worked out yet. So I, I mean, mean, from maybe, a standpoint of resources, to not be having coverage for Eagle Brook and Deerfield reunions, and this on the same right. weekend, EMS and police mm -hmm. will probably be happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah, I think it'll point. be less stressful because you're you're going to have to have police for that week, both weekends, and you know, and that and night night both weekends because you know you have a lot of parties happening at the reunions and the police. Are around more up there in Old Deerfield, and then you know if we have fireworks that night, you know. So I think actually it'll probably be less stressful for a police department to have it on the seventeenth. So are we all feeling a little bit more comfortable now? 
with the date picked? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it seemed to be a, a consensus that we're we think we're there, sort of. Well, yeah. this yeah. is this has been a huge impediment to moving forward, and I think we've got that resolved this evening. Yeah. Uh, I I'll I'll just throw the, this doesn't have to do with the parade, but I did have a really good meeting with the assistant principal today. I was talking to the folks offline earlier. Um, that we uh, can use the auditorium at the high school for speaker events and that sort of thing. And um, the he was very also very positive about trying to get students involved and, and the role. And what he also volunteered is that they would use the school's resources to advertise 350 events as well. Oh, that's so wonderful. That may that may spur, I was just thinking about the parade though, because if you've got student groups who wanted to put in a float or other things, having the school advertise the events as well, uh, might be a, an additional incentive or encouragement uh, to have the folks stay around and be a, a party to that, uh, that whole series of events. Maybe we can get the graduating class to do a, a float. Well, the other thing, that I was talking, or Marie was actually put out on Deerfield now, was asking about whether to have a unified um, uh, a gathering of graduates, not just the single year, but have everybody come back for a single event. Um, and there'll be nobody watching the parade. They'll all be in. Well, no, no, but. <laughs> but <laughs> The part of the response was, oh, good, we, we can come back on that weekend to march in the parade. Oh, that's a really cool thing. Maybe we can get classes to do different mm -hmm. things. Actually, I, th I think Betty Hollingsworth did that years ago because I remember my father talking about it at, at the Polish club. They just had a whole bunch of people uh, that went to Deerfield. It was then Deerfield High School. Yeah. But they just had a big class reunion for whoever showed. Oh, how cool is that? That is, that is actually a really good idea. <laughs> and you, he, saw, he, you saw everybody in the halls every, every anyways. Yeah. But the, he said the, the school would, would support that kind of adventure too. In fact, he has a list of all Betty left behind of all the great people in the graduating classes in the past. How so cool. um, you know, we can if we can get a group to to work to compile that information and get the word out i think it could be one hell of a bang and they could go to the chicken barbecue too <laughs> uh but it, it it could draw people back to town whereas just a, a single parade might not do it right but a whole weekend of events would yeah. do that so and that's pretty exciting all right so we feel good about the 17th I mean, poor Holly's like wiped out, but it's okay. We've got a, we've got a plan. Um, honestly, Kelly and I were concerned about shoring up the date, but more concerned about the post parade and all the goings on with that. So that monkey, totally monkey. away from us, is a good thing. So our our fr fractured energy can now just go back to one topic. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, and I will bring up at our select board meeting what, you know, the old home day thing is supposed to be happening. We'll we'll talk to Chris because Tim Tim um will have some input on to, you know, wanted whether we do a chicken barbecue on Sunday or not. And um, you know, well I, I Sue has in the past done or the recreation department has sponsored the old home day. And that was sort of our thing. The energy of the old home day should be on this weekend. Mm -hmm. so we'll we'll that will be what our discussion is. We we're not sure who's gonna do it, like I said, because we're not sure of Sue's health, but you know, we'll we'll do the it'll be a town more town activity. Okay. Don't even um, worry. Kelly and I will forward you the couple of pieces of communication that will be important for you to react to. Okay, perfect. Okay. Hey, Chris, I got your nice email and uh, I'll get back to you offline. I don't think we need to talk it 
in the meeting, but uh, it's fine. Um, I, I, I have to say I'm really, really excited, everybody. And if is there any way we can get a draft list of events that we can start, um, you know, having out there? Didn't you get my copy? Yes, yes. But I, I is that what? is that pretty much what people feel comfortable with? I didn't know how solid that was. There's a lot there. Yeah, there's a lot there. It's a wicked lot. Well, I, you know, I'm, I mean, some of it's got to be refined for sure. And uh, Diane and I are going to be working on Founders Day, and I've talked to people, other people about that. So we'll, we'll, we'll work on that for for a while. But okay. I think I stopped at the parade because I really didn't know when it was going to happen and whatever. So I think now with that resolved, we've got the date. Uh, we can we can flesh that out as time goes on, but. I well, let me put it to the, the steering committee uh, right now. I'm fairly comfortable that with some refinement, we can put together a schedule up to and including the parade. And I would just soon get that out on our website and out to the public and to the press before we can resolve what's going on in the in, you know in the fall. We can put in some fillers. Um, one of the things I'll, and the word needs to get out, we have been challenged by the town of Northfield for a softball game in August. <laughs> How cute. Uh, who's going to play? I don't know. It won't be me, which is I'm really <laughs> annoyed at because I couldn't run the bases if I tried. You need some ringers. Um, but uh, <laughs> anyway, the, the uh, part of their uh, activities uh, next year is somebody on their 350th is also on the recreation committee and their intent is to start in the spring to revamp their total softball field so the uh, competent the competitive game um, the challenge to Deerfield would be the opening game on their new <laughs> Field. I think that's really cool. <laughs> the, I, love, uh, I love that kind of stuff. That's good. Well, the the other thing I'll, I'll tell you, I think the words out that I, I'm going to be giving a talk at, in Northfield as part of their 350th as well uh, on the 19th of February. So if anybody's um, interested in learning about the Squawk Eagle, the Sokoki and Northfield and, and Native American history going back 1500 years, um, maybe an opportunity to come listen. Come listen. All right, if there's, I think we're through really with the agenda today. Um, thank you all for coming. I'll um, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll leave, got something. Um. The parade work group is going to stay on the line for a few minutes after the recording stops. So just to let you know, we're going to just use the line for a few extra minutes. Okay. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Appreciate, appreciate you being Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Totally welcome. Stan's been on too. Hang on. Can I ask Chris a question? Uh, okay. We've had people on Facebook wanting to know where they can get the Deerfield 350 glasses. Are they available anywhere for people to buy, or is any venue? Uh, yeah, Stan is in the best position to tell us that, and we'll, we'll get it. He's on Facebook, so we'll get it out there tomorrow. Okay, all righty. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I don't have them here in Texas, so let's put it that way. You're in Texas. Yeah. All righty. <laughs> oh, somebody and, asked, somebody and I, still asked. Open, I still haven't opened my can of beer because I want the can. I want to figure out how to get the beer out of the can before, so I don't wreck and pull the tab. I haven't well, figured that one out yet. Put in the bottom and then chug it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Chris, are we able to buy the Deerfield beer? That's yeah, my so, question. So, so the initial batch that was made was about 110 cases. And so we used 11 cases at the tables. There. Oh. But, and I thought that I thought that Gary was going to actually have a sign up telling how people could buy it. 
but I think he's going to distribute it through the liquor store outlets in Deerfield first. It wasn't I'm there. Figure that out because I, I looked. I, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't out there as of the thirty first of December, which Gary said it wasn't. I saw him on the. On I the was 31st. there at Spirit Shop today. So, so we'll um, we'll uh, we'll yeah. figure that out and get that word out to via Facebook and stuff like that. Yeah. Good. Okay. That would That's be really good. great. I think and then we can make more batches in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, good let me answer. ask one other question. It's like we're, 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 I don't think we've officially ended yet because no one seconded the motion that yeah, we the hearing committee hasn't voted. But um, some several individuals in town have, have given me memorabilia from the 300th. Yeah. And I'm wondering if uh, what the feeling is about exhibiting that material in some particular spot um, around town, or whether they'd be interested in, in seeing it. Where, what did you have in mind, Peter? We have the cases in, in the town hall, I think have some space, but I don't know where else you were thinking. It, it, it's, it's starting to work on space, but John's starting to put his business uh, materials in those cases too, but it, it just is is as into. I mean, I can find a venue. I just wonder what people thought about ex exhibiting some of that, or maybe even together when we. If you're maybe Chris, one way to to <laughs> friends of Deerfield is uh, having an open house or you know whatever. If you're if you're selling your material, maybe we could put together a partial exhibit that you could set up next to it that just says this is what it was like in in the in 1973. Yeah, I mean, because I know I donated all my um, family stuff from the 300 and the uh, friends of Deerfield have it. It includes um, a leather case from arms, the arms factory. OK, my father, my father had one of those and he left a note explaining what it was and how they did it. Okay. Wow. So, wow. so that, that's kicking around, too. So they, you've got stuff, Peter, I guess. The, Friends of Deerfield have stuff that I left behind, and um, I'm sure there's John Novay probably has stuff too. Yeah, I mean, I've got a num I've, I've got memorabilia from a number of things historically from Deerfield, and and if other people have things like the wallet or or whatever, uh, that's good. We actually bought one. Gary and I found one online, and we we purchased one with the idea of putting up an exhibit about the arms manufacturing company. But I was just wondering about the memorabilia. Um, Diane, well, your hands up. Um, town meetings at Frontier High School. You're going to have some of your talks at Frontier High School. Why don't you see if you can borrow one of the cases for a traveling exhibit after town meeting and school is done, move it to the town hall or find another venue cool. when, when need be. Yeah. Good idea. Okay. Uh, we're back for the second call. Can we, uh, motion to adjourn. I second it. All those in favor? Aye, Holly. Aye, Holly. Aye, Diane.